I'm sure you've always thought about, well, how did Jeff Bezos decide to go from selling online books to online groceries and online movies and online everything? At the same time, I'm sure you've wondered, why did Elon Musk start with a sedan and an SUV? Well, you see, all these ideas are answered through corporate finance, specifically regarding the two different topics about how to value investment decisions. You see, companies are constantly looking at, okay, where is the best place to invest my money? Not in the stock market or anything like that. They're just looking at their own business operations. And like we said, they can either invest in reducing costs in the long run, or they can invest into things that will grow them and hopefully make them more money down the road. But both these techniques require two different tools that we're going to use right now. These two topics are called net present value, sometimes called NPV, and internal rate of return, sometimes called IRR. Now NPV and IRR are both built on the idea of time value money. One dollar today is worth more than one dollar tomorrow. So as long as you have that idea in your head and you completely kind of understand where that's coming from, you can easily go into either of these two tools and techniques and be able to use them to their full extent. You see, we've actually already used NPV. You just didn't know it yet. You see, when we did that present value formula, back when we were looking at the different options in between $100 today or $110 a year from now, that's actually a little bit of NPV. You see, net present value is all about discounting the future cash flows, whether it's through cost savings or through new revenue, that you're gonna get in the future to today's dollars and then subtracting how much money it's gonna to cost to invest into that deal. So with that, let's kind of dive into examples so you have an idea of what I'm talking about here. Let's say that I run a hotel company and I'm actually looking to buy a new hotel property. Now this hotel property is up for sale for $300 and I believe I can probably operate it for five years and I can make $100 per year every year I operate it. But after that last year, I actually plan on selling it for 300 bucks again because I think the market's gonna be pretty steady. Should I do this deal or should I not do this deal? See, these are problems that business managers face all the time, but luckily they're really not that complicated once you understand net present value. The first step in every net present value equation or calculation is always build a timeline. Now, do you remember back when I talked about how Excel thinks in cash inflows and outflows and outflows were negative or red? Well, we're gonna do the exact same thing here. You see, we're gonna build a timeline from zero, that's right now, to year five. So. Year zero is when we actually pay money. Year one is one year from year zero. So today plus a year. Year two is two years. Year three is three years, four, five. You, you get the gist of it. So given the information I've already given you, what's that timeline look like? Well, I know it's the hotel is for sale for $300. So if I was to buy the hotel, it'd be negative $300 in year zero, AKA right now. Now. I said that I would make $100 every year that I operated this hotel, and I plan on operating the hotel for five years. So in year one, two, three, four, and five, I would have a positive $100. That's $100 that the hotel is made that I get. So it's an inflow to me. Unlike the $300 purchase price I had to pay, which is an outflow. That's why it was negative. So five years of $100 coming to me, not too bad. But I also threw a wrench into the works. You see, at the very end, I said, oh, I'm also gonna say that I'm gonna sell it for $300 at the end of year five. Okay, so let's do this one more time. In that situation, I would go to year five and I'd say, I'm gonna sell it for $300. So that would be, I sell it, I get cash, cash inflow of positive $300. Now I just add that to the $100 I'd be getting anyway. So our completed timeline would be negative $300 in year zero, positive $100, in years one, two, three, and four, and then a positive $400 in year five. Now that you have your timeline built, it's time to leverage those Excel skills we taught you a little bit earlier, that PV and FV function. You see, if we really wanted to, we could get the present value of every one of these calculations in order to add them up and figure out the exact present value of this deal. However, there's a faster way to do it, and I'm gonna show you that right now. But first, before we do that, Let's use the PV function just as a tester real fast for that first payment, just to remind everyone what it looks like. So open up Excel and type in the PV function. Now the first thing you're gonna see is rate. Oh crap, I didn't show you the rate yet. So uh, we're just gonna wake it and we're gonna say the rate's gonna be 10%. So that's gonna be our discount rate. So on rate, 10% or 0.1, 
It's the exact same value, so it doesn't really matter to me. Now we're just going to discount that very first payment of $100. So how many years is that from now? It's one year. So for inPer, you type in one. Then that payment, it's gonna be 100. So type in 100. There you go. Remember, it's a positive 100 because we're getting that money. And then lastly, future value. We're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna do it a little bit later. So right now, put zero. Close out that equation, press enter, and boom. You have discounted that very first payment. Now we could do that for years two, three, four, and five, but I wanna show you something else that's pretty cool. You see, all you have to do is build your timeline in Excel, that negative 300 in year zero, then that 100 in years one, two, three, and four, then the 400 in year five. Once you have that built out, you can actually use what's called the NPV function to discount all those year one through five back into year zero time. Now remember, we don't have to discount anything that happens in year zero because it's happening today. So therefore, the present value of that money and the future value are the exact same. It's happening all right now. And so all we have to do is discount, use the NPV function for years one, two, three, four, and five. The way you do that is you type in NPV, and the first thing it's gonna ask you is for that rate again. We said the rate's gonna be 10%, so type in 10% or 0.1, same thing, comma, and then you just have to select all your other payments. And now this works great as long as your payments are equally spread apart in time. So you're gonna click year one value, that positive 100, drag it all the way out to that 400 in year five, and you've selected the remainder of your timeline. And remember, you don't have to discount time zero. Close that off, press enter, and boom, you now have the present value of those cash flows. Now, the NPV function only works if those cash flows are separated by the exact same amount of time. Given that we are working in one year increments, years one, two, three, four, and five, it works out fine. However, if I was working on a year in between the first hundred and then a two year period in between the second hundred, it would mess up the equation. So be sure you only use the Excel NPV equation on an equal period point of view. If you have differing periods in between payments, it's not gonna work, and then you have to go back to the old fashioned way of doing it with that PV equation. But since we don't have that problem here, we now have a value for those cash flows. That value is $565. So in theory, that's how much those cash flows should be worth to us today given our 10% discount rate. Now we are gonna pay, what, $300 for those. So the official last step of doing a net present value is you actually take that difference. You say, okay, $565 minus $300 gives us a net present value of $265. See, that's where NPV gets its name. It's subtracting how much you're gonna pay from that very final present value of the future investment. So anything that has a positive NPV is usually a good deal. I mean, some companies will have minimums. They'll say, well, we're not gonna do a deal unless it makes us a million bucks or unless it makes us $10 million. I mean, you have to think about how big Apple is. They're not gonna care about $265, but they're gonna care about $265 million. So that's why they have these kind of minimums that they kind of look into and they instill when they make these kind of investment decisions. For our example though, this is obviously a slam dunk. We're gonna pay $300 to get $565 every day, no matter what. We do that a few times in a row and all of a sudden we actually have a pretty good sized hotel company. See, that's how NPV works. It allows you to put a dollar value on the actual investment opportunity that you're looking at to say, hey, is this worth it or is this not? So then what's IRR? Remember, IRR stands for internal rate of return. And all it really means is at what discount rate does NPV equal zero? Remember, we kind of get to make up the discount rate sometimes. Sometimes it's given to us by our bosses. Sometimes other stuff comes into play. We'll talk about here, that here in a second. But a lot of time, and especially in these examples, we're just making it up on the fly. So at what interest rate is this not a good deal? And that's what IRR will tell us. And you see, you can do IRR by hand, but why would you want to? It's not fun and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So we're just gonna show you how to do it just in Excel because as long as you have Excel, you should be good to go. You can also type it into Google. You can find tons of ways to do it on Google too. But 99% of all businesses use Excel and that's what we're here to teach you. It is about business, not about how to do weird math formulas by hand. So let's open up that Excel again and let's look into IRR. 
So now that you have your Excel open again, hopefully you haven't gotten rid of that timeline of cash outflows and inflows that you already had out there. In case you did, let's go over them real fast just for our hotel example. Remember year zero, we had negative $300. That's because we're paying $300 for this hotel property. In years one, two, three, and four, we have positive 100. And that's money that we're getting through the operations of the hotel. And then in year five, we have a positive 400, which is through the sale of that hotel and the operations of that hotel. So you have that all in some kind of line, up to you if you whether to do that horizontally or vertically. And then all you have to do is open up a new cell and type in the IRR function. Unlike the NPV function, which did not take year zero into consideration, the IRR function does. You see, in order for it to equal zero somehow, some way, which is what IRR is solving for, there has to be a negative number. So make sure you select that negative $300, go all the way to that positive $400, then you close it, and that's it. That's all IRR needs. Press enter, and boom, 33%. So what's that 33% mean? That means that if we have to borrow money, or if it just costs us money, or if our discount rate is more than 33%, this is a bad deal. However, if it's less than 33%, it's a good deal. Remember our original discount rate was 10%. So once again, this proves that this would be a good deal as long as we can borrow money at that 10% rate to finance this deal. Or as long as our opportunity cost or investment opportunities or anything like that, we're not more than 10%. You see IRR and NPV went together are fantastic tools. Even by itself, IRR and MPV can be very, very handy for business managers to understand just investment opportunities and which ones seem to be good and which ones seem to be bad. They have their limitations, so I highly suggest you use them together, and if they both say the exact same thing of, yes, this is a good project, then you should be good to go. Now, if one argues with the other one, I usually go with IRR just because IRR seems to be the easier way to understand it in my mind. Now there's other people that go with NPV and of course, more likely more power to them, go with it. But for me, I like IRR more just because I think in percentiles. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that for one, businesses have a lot of different investment opportunities that they face and not just in the stock market, but in their own operations. Whether they want to replace McDonald's employees with little kiosks so that people can order their Big Macs without ever talking to somebody. Or if Amazon wants to invent drone delivery, that's gonna be a big investment. And even the autonomous cars that Uber is building out and try to make mainstream, that's another type of investment that every company is looking at doing. They're trying to save costs. Now there's other investments that they're trying to do that is growing their companies. And that could be something like our hotel example of how buying one more property will make us money in the long run. And the way they decide upon which investments are good and which ones are bad are through topics like net present value and internal rate of return. These two topics together can really help business managers understand which investments are worthwhile and which investments are not worth going for.